Okay, what we have on the bench here today is an SAE impulse noise reduction system. This is a model 5000A. It is in for repair. The claim, the problem on this uh, that is claimed by the owner is that it does not power up. And I do have the power on right now and the LED is not lit. Uh, so we're going to have to find out if it's an issue powering up or a bad LED. Uh, I think he tried to hook it up and it didn't uh, pass any audio through it either. This slider control is a little sloppy down the the right side here. It's a little, I don't know, it just feels very punky and spongy. But it feels okay on the left hand side. So I'm kind of thinking that the right hand side of the pot's starting to come apart. Uh, it's possible that because of this is missing the knob, it may have been dropped on this and maybe the knob cracked off. And it was probably on this side when that happened. So we don't know if this slider pot is destroyed or not, or cracked. Uh, we'll have to find that out. The buttons seem to be in good shape. They seem to cycle. So we're going to have to figure out how to get into this thing, and once we do, we'll, we'll take a closer look. Okay, I've got the cover off of this thing, and they did some pretty sneaky stuff here. They've actually, uh, looks like epoxy coated the top of the ICs so you can't get part numbers off them. Um, they'll probably have to destroy them to get the part number off uh, if, so that 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 sucks um, so let's take a look at that pot slider real quick before we move into the power issue uh, ah yes okay the back of the pot has popped off the back and it's just floating there I'll just kind of move the outside here so I'm hoping the metal contacts are still intact in the back, but this thing looks like it just can be pushed in and re these uh, tabs folded back over. This thing has definitely been dropped on that that pot. Uh, either that or something smashed into it at some point. So I guess the first thing to do here is to test if we're getting any power out of this transformer to the main board. And it should probably be, I don't know, I don't have a service manual or a schematic for this, but I would guess maybe somewhere around 24 volts or something. 12 to 24, I'm not sure. So uh, we'll try and fix that pot here. And actually it does look like the contacts are in there. It's kind of hard to film it, but they appear to be in there, so we should just be able to maybe bend this down yeah I'm gonna have to get in there with a pair of needle nose those things are this thing must have been hit pretty hard they're pretty stiff tabs Okay, that tab's bent back up. Alright, so now she's sitting back there again. Alright. So now we're just going to have to fold that tab back over and hopefully that should uh, secure it. Okay, so I've measured the transformer output. I just noticed it is center tapped. So there is 40 volts across the two pins, the two outer um, taps, and across from one side to the center tap which is here so from here to here is 20 volts and from here to here is 20 volts and across here to here is 40 volts so the transformer is working so it looks like the problem is a little bit uh, deeper in the circuit um, uh, I'm gonna test the LED next because that seems to be the next logical thing to test and to make sure it's functioning otherwise um, you can chase problems that aren't there and it just could be an indication issue uh, I'm not sure if it really is an indication issue because I think the person that uh, that owns this has tried to hook it up and use it. But with that pot being a little out and uh, not seated correctly, that could have been a reason why it wasn't working too. Okay, so it looks like I may have located the schematic for this. I googled the model number and sure enough, this came up. Um, we have, uh, it's kind of cruddy, it's not very great but it's better than nothing there's no IC numbers on here telling you what ICs are in this but it does give you the drawing number which is a 17-0386 rev B I believe that is the board number 
and that coincides with the board number itself so we might have some luck with this hopefully we'll be able to just troubleshoot a power issue and this will be it but um, hoping that none of those I think these are just quad op amps uh, to be to be honest with you that's what it seems like uh, according to the schematic they're just probably just low noise quad op amps so if we did have trouble with one we can probably replace it with something comparable so let's uh, start troubleshooting this power section okay so before I go testing that LED <clears throat> because it's, it might be that that LED is dead and the power supply may be working. So I'm just going to go right to the power supply section and that's right here. And I'm going to be testing, <clears throat> see if I can get, uh, there's a junction point between these two Zener diodes here. This is the ground. So I'm going to be measuring from the ground side to uh, the emitter on these um, transistors here and see if I get my plus and minus 15 volts out. Then they go through a 10 ohm resistor and they get another negative 15 and another plus uh, 15 over here. So if we get our 15 volt rails on each end here, we should be pretty good. But we'll test the, the resistor too to make sure we're getting uh, voltages at these uh, points right here. And that will confirm that this whole uh, bridge rectifier and this, this transformer, I think we know the transformer is good, but the bridge is good and this whole uh, circuit here for the power supply is good. And then once that we, we confirm that is good, we'll move on. So I'm going to go to the other cam here and we're just going to, there, there are the two transistors right there and the two zeners. So, see if I can get this in here. Okay, we have minus 15 there. And we should have plus 15 on this one. And we do. So, we'll move this down here. So we're good there. Now we're just going to test this resistor on each side of this resistor here and make sure we have the voltage. Yep, and we'll go to this one. Yep, minus 15 volts minus 15 volts so the power supply is working so let's go back here to the desktop uh, all right so we've confirmed all these test points we have voltage so it's probably that the LED is blown um, I don't see an LED on this schematic at all so um, the LED is actually tapped off of, I believe, one side of the AC and one side of this bridge here, and it's not in this depicted on this schematic. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and whack on an LED where the existing one hooks up and see if it uh, lights up. All right, so here's the two points where those LED wires go over to. I mean, we could measure it, but uh, since it's off this... Um, one side of the AC here they're doing something not very they're not pulling it off a of DC or anything I think this is kind of a botch way of hooking up the LED on their part so um, without pulling the wires out and testing the LED itself I'm just gonna put another one in its place just a real quick see if it lights up I'm not looking for perfection here, I just want it to stick on there. Come on. Good enough. Now let's power it up, see what it does. Hey, look at that. The LED is on. 
So the LED is dead on the front of the unit. No big deal, we'll replace it. It's possible that that pot that was broken on the front was the source of the issue and probably why it wasn't working. It wasn't making any connections. So we're gonna replace that LED and um, we'll try hooking it up and see what, see what it does, see if it passes audio through. All right, I think we're ready for a test here. I think between the LED and the pot falling apart was the issue. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, we'll give this a test. So basically here we got the defeat button. This basically will just bypass the uh, this whole system and just let the audio pass through. This invert button here is the button that if you press that in, the pops and clicks will be just heard on, on the uh, when this is pushed in and when you pull it out the audio will come through with the pops and clicks and this adjustment here uh, will adjust the how much pops and clicks you want to try and squelch out so to say so I have a video that's on YouTube here of a scratched vinyl record I'm only gonna play a few seconds of it it's probably not even gonna be it's just a few chimes and stuff but um, it has some severe pops and clicks on it just to see what this thing does so let's turn it on And we're going to put this all the way down to zero, and we're just going to have this on. And just play the first five seconds or so. We get it on the scope, too. Okay, so you heard the pops and clicks. So now we're going to uh, turn the invert on and play the audio again, the same exact audio, and see what it does. All right, it's playing. There's nothing going. Now if I turn this up, that's the pops and clicks from that vinyl record. You can hear it playing on my little amplifier here. And the sensitivity is how much you're going to um, take out. So when it's actually over here on the right side while it's in this monitor pops and clicks mode, it's actually telling you how what you're hearing. When you turn it down, it's not much. But when you click it out, when you bring it over to the right, it's that's when it's actually taking it out. So it's it's kind of weird. It's maybe reversed a little bit, but uh, maybe that's just the way it's designed. So I'm going to uh, play the record again and start it here and then slide it all the way over. And you'll hear a little bit of a difference in how much it takes out. Take the invert button out. So it is indeed seems to be working. Um, when I play just the, you know, in this invert mode here, if I play just the audio, I'm just basically getting um, the pops and clicks out of it. No audio. So it actually seems to work pretty well. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. That uh, seems to be repaired. Um, obviously we'll have to, I don't have a, a turntable, this is the only way I can test it, so uh, this is not giving it a truly a fair test, so, uh, but on the bench here, I think it's good enough to prove that it works. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, we'll see you in the next one.